Cancer of the Vulva. This is one of a series of cancer videos that can be found on the website aboutcancer.com. Vulvar cancer is rare, accounting for only 5% of the female genital cancers in the United States. Median age is 68, though it's become younger in recent years. Symptoms or signs of vulvar cancer would include bleeding or itching, and this should lead to an examination by a physician. The symptoms to be aware of, a lump or growth on the vulva, change in the appearance of the skin, unexplained itching, bleeding, or tenderness. As noted elsewhere, cancer of the vulva is quite rare. Only 4,800 cancers in the United States, much less common than breast cancer, uterus, ovary, or cervix, as noted here. There are two pathways that lead to vulvar cancer. One cause is related to HPV or human papillomavirus infection. The other is related to old age and chronic inflammatory or skin changes. So the risk factors would include old age, precancerous changes, lichen sclerosis, which is an odd skin disease, human papillomavirus as noted, other cancers of the vagina or cervix. This is more common in cigarette smoking patients. The age distribution is fairly broad, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s as noted, basically because there's a young age group, the HPV group, and the older group related to chronic skin changes in older women. The incidence has been increasing slightly over the last few years as noted, and the overall death rate has increased slightly as well. About 90% of these cancers are squamous. Squamous is from the Latin word to scale. This means the cells that cover the outside surface of the body. Survival is related to the stage, particularly the lymph node status. As noted here, squamous most common. Other unusual cancers in this area can include melanoma or basal cell. The other list of odd histologies in this area as noted. Vulvar anatomy, uh, basically the vulva includes all the tissue external to the vagina. So the mons pubis, the labia, the clitoris, the Bartholin glands, and the perineum. Detailed images are available as noted here. For practical purposes, the labia majora are the most common site of vulvar cancer, about 50% of the cases. The labia minora, about 15 to 20%. The clitoris and Bartholla glands, a smaller group, and about 5% are multifocal, which means they arise from multiple areas. The lymphatics are critical in this part of the body. In general, with GYN cancers, it's normally the periortic, pelvic, and groin or inguinal lymph nodes. With vulvar cancer, the inguinal nodes are the most critical. Again, there are detailed anatomy diagrams available that describe the lymph node anatomy of the pelvis. But for our purposes, the inguinal or femoral lymph nodes are the most important. These nodes can be superficial or deep. The area of the vulva normally drains initially to the superficial femoral or groin nodes and then spreads to the deep femoral nodes and then from there can go further to the pelvic iliac nodes. If a sentinel node biopsy is done, they found the nodes are almost always lie over the medial or medial or just above the femoral blood vessels. 85% of the time they're superficial and about 5% they are deep. The odds of finding lymph nodes spread are noted here. If the groin nodes are already enlarged, the odds of finding cancer in them is 60 to 75%. Even if the groin nodes are not enlarged, the odds of finding cancer in those nodes is about 25 to 35%, so it's important to do a biopsy. And once the cancer is in the groin nodes, the odds of cancer is already spread to the pelvic lymph nodes is about 28 to 30%. The depth of the tumor is related to the odds of the cancer involving the lymph nodes, as noted here. If the tumor is a millimeter or less, the odds of it having spread to the lymph nodes would be very low. And the deeper the tumor is noted, the higher the risk. The bigger the tumor, the higher the risk. And the more the cancer is extended, the higher risk of finding that the cancer is already spread to the lymph nodes. 
The staging system is based on both the size of the tumor and whether the lymph nodes are involved. Stage 1 would be generally a small tumor without lymph nodes. Stage 2 is further extension, as noted here and in these diagrams. Stage 3 is if the cancer is spread even further or has now gotten into the inguinal femoral or so-called groin lymph nodes, as noted here. And stage uh, and a PET scan will often show these lymph nodes quite well, and PET scans are commonly used to stage vulvar cancer. Stage four would be even further extent of the cancer or further spread of the cancer. Fortunately, in the United States, most cancers present in a local or regional stage, and the overall five-year relative survival rate is quite good, as noted here, 86% for local, 54% for regional. If the lymph nodes are clear or not involved, so-called negative, the five-year survival rate is still quite good, 70 to 93%. Once the lymph nodes are involved, the cure rate declines significantly, as noted. The other staging system, the one through four categories used by the NCDB, National Cancer Database, and the distribution is shown here, and the survival by uh, FIGO stage is shown here as well. There are multiple other tables available on survive five-year survival by stage and by lymph node status is shown here, here, and here. The treatment of this cancer is primarily surgery. The surgery is quite complicated and technical, and much of it involves the extent of surgery necessary, whether a partial vulvectomy or radical vulvectomy. Up until the 1980s, the standard treatment was radical surgery, removing the entire vulva and regional lymph nodes. Over the years, in order to decrease the side effects, tumors that are more clinically confined to the vulva, which means smaller, will often have a wide local excision with just a centimeter around them. Separate incisions will be made for the inguinal lymph node surgery to avoid side effects or complications. Inguinal lymph node dissection is often only done on one side, ipsilateral, rather than both sides and the femoral lymph node dissection is omitted in some very early cases. So modern treatment is shown here. Early stage is so-called radical local excision. More advanced stages are considered a modified radical, often with a sentinel node biopsy to look at the lymph nodes. And the more advanced stages are often treated with radiation plus chemo, often referred to as chemo radiation and then possibly followed by limited surgery. The sentinel node biopsy technique, the surgeon injects blue dye or radioactive dye into the vulva or the area involved in the skin and then tracks the lymph nodes that are involved directly. In sentinel node biopsies, for instance, they were able to find cancer in 26% of the cases. And the side effects of doing a sentinel node biopsy are much less than a formal node dissection. There is, as noted here, a high risk of wound breakdown, cellulitis, and lymphedema with a traditional inguinal femoral lymph node dissection. A sentinel node biopsy lowers this risk. And the other advantage of a sentinel node biopsy, it, it, with, it will tell which side the lymph nodes are spread to. So cancers in the midline will often go to both sides bilateral in 70% of the cases. If the location is somewhat ambiguous, 58%. If the vulvar lesion is clearly on one side or the other, then only about 22% of the time does it drain bilaterally. If radiation is used, modern radiation techniques are now important. There were studies done years ago to see if radiation could be used instead of surgery. About 20 to 35% of patients with negative feeling lymph nodes will have cancer in the nodes as noted. There was a small, sm small study that compared surgery with radiation to the groin, but there were more relapses in the radiation group, 18%. So this study was discontinued. The study was criticized because the dose of radiation to the groin nodes was considered too low by modern standards. The pelvic nodes was a different study. There was a a study that showed if the groin nodes were positive, they randomized patients between pelvic lymph node surgery or pelvic radiation. 
And in this study, radiation was actually superior to surgery. There was a better survival, less cancer deaths from vulva, and less chronic leg swelling or edema. So this has become a standard for the deep pelvic nodes. So postoperative radiation would be indicated if the pathology shows some high risk features, such as lymphovascular invasion, deeply invasive or large tumor, if the surgical margins were either involved or were less than eight millimeters, if there are more than one lymph node involved, or even if there was one lymph node involved, if the pathologist finds what's called extracapsular extension or invasion. Indications for chemo radiation would be a very large cancer, one that's attached to structures that might require radical surgery. So radiation and chemo may avoid a colostomy or bladder surgery. If the cancer is fixed to the bone or their gross obvious lymph node involvements, it may be better to do chemo radiation first. There are multiple studies now with chemo radiation for squamous cancer of the vulva. The chemo is usually 5-FU plus cisplatin or mitomycin. The radiation dose is in the 40 to 65 range. The cure rate varies considerably 25 to 75 percent in the published studies. A typical study would be such as this locally advanced squamous cancer treated over a period of years. Most of the patients had radiation, but often with chemotherapy. The dose of radiation was 64 gray. Most of the patients had more advanced disease or lymph node involvements or large tumors. In this study, the overall cure rate was only 50%. The risk of a local relapse was only 25%, however, and the risk of serious long-term side effects in the bladder or rectum was in the 4 to 10% range. This is typical of some of the studies that are available. If radiation is used, a CAT scan is obtained at the time of the simulation. The structures are inserted into the computer. Cross-sectional anatomy of the female pelvis is used to identify these structures three-dimensionally. And on the CAT scans, the physician will target all the normal structures to avoid, like the bone and the bowel but identify the lymph nodes or the other structures that are important to target, as shown here in these color CT images. And the specific lymph node regions are identified on the CAT scan. With IMRT techniques or intensity modulated radiation, the computer is colored in the lymph node areas that need to be treated, as well as the vagina and vulva that will be treated with an IMRT technique. If only the lymph nodes are treated, the IMRT technique may avoid the bladder or the rectum as shown here and only radiate the lymph nodes as shown here and shown here using an IMRT technique with a tomotherapy device. The side effects of pelvic radiation can be considered particularly uh, significant when you radiate the vulvar and vagina area. The structures in the way will predict the odds and type of side effects expected. Radiation to the bowel will cause cramps or diarrhea. Radiation to the rectum can cause, again, diarrhea, rectal irritation. Radiation to the lymph nodes can cause leg swelling or lymphedema. Radiation to the bladder can cause urinary burning, stinging, or frequency. Radiation to the vulva and vagina can cause considerable skin burning and irritation. And most of these patients need a lot of nursing care because of the areas of inflammation in the vagina, the vulva, and the skin in that region. More detailed information can be found on the website about cancer.com.